Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lions from Lambs YouTube channel. Well, as promised, I'm beginning a series of videos that will cover mathematical operations such as addition and subtraction. In addition to the operations, I will also demonstrate how kids can use each of the ways to represent numbers and values that the video lessons have introduced up to this point to help them understand what is happening in a particular equation or actually use them to solve the problem. This video lesson will focus on one and two digit addition without regrouping. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, regrouping is simply what used to be referred to as carrying the one when you add. I'll use the term regrouping because again, one of the primary objectives for me in making these videos is to help you understand the strategies and terminology that your child is being taught right now as a fair amount of them are perhaps different than what was used when you were in school yourself. And that disconnect can make it difficult to help your child. So this video will not have regrouping. I'll cover that concept in another video. Here's the video lesson. So addition is a mathematical operation that combines two or more numbers to find their total or sum. A sum is a very important vocabulary word to learn because it's the term that will be used in school both on tests and assignments. Sum is the combined total of two or more numbers. Or more simply put, it's the answer to an addition problem. This is the plus sign or the addition operation symbol, okay? And this tells us that the operation we're gonna be performing will be addition, we'll be adding the numbers together. Now in this addition problem, we will be adding two and three together in order to find their sum or their total. Because they're both single digit numbers, they both only contain the ones place value. The addition symbol lets us know that the operation we're performing is addition. Now the numbers two and three are called our addends. Addends is what we call the numbers that are being added together. Okay, so if we look at the addition problem another way, we're going to stack the numbers vertically. Now we're doing this because the strategies we're going to use are better suited to a vertical alignment. And also the standard algorithm for addition, which is ultimately what we want kids to learn to use, is also done vertically. So for this problem, we're going to go ahead and add our frames in just to keep track of our place values. As we covered before, both numbers are only single digits. So there's only the ones place value. First, we're going to solve this problem using base 10 blocks. The two digit that is in the ones place converts to two units. The three digit will convert to three units. Remember, both of these digits are in the ones place, so their value is represented by unit blocks in base 10 blocks. Okay. So now it becomes very easy to solve this particular problem with base 10 blocks because we just need to count the blocks. And if we count the units, one, two, three, four, five, we have five units. Now, before we move ahead, you might be thinking that two plus three is easy and we don't need to use blocks. And that may be true for two plus three. But there are two things to remember here. First, a child who is learning math for the first time needs to get a concrete understanding before they can grasp the abstract. Also, these strategies continue to be effective for problems that are significantly more challenging. So the big thing here is to trust the process. So if we take the same problem, two plus three, 
We can also solve it using picture math. Remember, picture math is a powerful resource for students because they'll always be able to draw when needed, even on a test, because they're almost always going to be given some form of scratch paper when taking a math exam. So 2 plus 3 converts to 2 dots on the top number and 3 dots on the bottom. And again, they can quickly be counted up for a sum of five dots. All right, so now that we know the basics, let's move on to two-digit addition. We're going to stick to a simple problem, 12 plus 13. Now, moving from one-digit addition to two-digit addition can be complicated at first, but we can keep it under control. The most important thing is to keep track of our place values. Now in single digit numbers, we only have the ones place, but when we move into the two digit, we have the ones and the tens place. It's crucial that we keep these in order and that when we add, we are adding like place values, meaning we're adding the ones place to the one and the tens to the tens. Or if we mess up on that, we'll almost always get the answer wrong. So when we look at 12 plus 13, we can separate our place values. Now the two and the three respectively are in the ones place. And then the two one digits are in the ones place. So when we look at it here, we have a breakdown of the values in these numbers. Okay, and this is why this is so important, because we have to remember that those digits one, because they're in the tens place, they actually have a value of 10 each. Okay, so let's go ahead and stack our numbers. And we're going to go ahead and use our frame on this one just to keep keep everything aligned correctly. All right, so if we're using base 10 blocks for this two-digit addition problem, we can represent the 12 as one rod and two units. And we can represent the 13 as one rod and three units. Now, just like we did with our earlier addition problems, when we add up the units in the ones place, we get five. When we add our rods in the tens place, we get two because there are two rods. Now, conceptually, we always want to remember and make sure kids remember and fully understand that this is a value of 20 because if we go to those rods, like we learned when we did the place value video, there's actually a total value of 10 units in those, in each of those rods. Okay. So now we can do picture form almost the very same way. 12 becomes one line and two dots, and 13 becomes one line and three dots. There's five dots and two lines. So we get our answer of 25. Now, if we want to look at this in expanded form, okay, we have to expand these numbers first. Now, you remember expanded form means expanding the numbers out to where they are basically an addition sentence based on each place value. So when we expand 12, we expand that to 10 plus 2. 13 will expand to 10 plus 3. So when we look at these and we add up those place values, We'll add the 2 plus 3, which will give us 5. And then we'll add 10 plus 10, which gives us 20. 
Now, on a quick side note, if you're wondering why we add the ones place first, we want to always maintain the practice of starting in the ones place because that becomes extremely important when we get into regrouping. Always start with the ones place. Okay, so now we have 20 and we have five. Now this is still in expanded form, 20 plus five. But all we have to do now is condense the number into standard form or, or basically add them together, which is 20 plus five, which equals 25. Okay, so all of those were scaffolding strategies to help kids get the understanding of what is going on conceptually in a math problem. Now, let's look at the ultimate goal. Let's look at the standard algorithm. This is probably most familiar to anyone who do, who's done math past the third grade level. But it's important to remember that if you're helping your young child with math, those early concrete and pictorial models are essential for helping them grasp and understand what is actually happening in a math problem. All right, so I'm gonna add our frames in just to make sure we've got our place values aligned. And now it's a simple matter to solve this problem. Always start with the ones place. And if we look at the ones, we've got two and three in the ones place. Two plus three equals five. Then we move to the tens place. One plus one equals two. So 12 plus 13 equals 25. Now these strategies work for any number regardless of the number of place values. Base 10 blocks go all the way up to the thousands place, as does picture math. But the goal is to move kids to using the standard algorithm as fast as it is possible for them. Give them plenty of practice with all of these strategies. Repetition is the mother of skill. Let them practice every day, ultimately moving to the standard algorithm almost exclusively so hopefully that gives you or your child a better idea of the many strategies that can be used to, to solve addition problems. We just want to always remember that the end goal of these strategies from base 10 blocks to expanded form is to lead the student towards using numbers and algorithms. They are ideally just to be used in the beginning as the child gains an understanding of what is conceptually happening and then gradually let go of in favor of the standard algorithm. Thank you for your time. If you found value in the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you have a comment, question, or suggestion, leave it below. Until next time, take care.